Thank you. All right. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the curriculum committee for September 15, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, as chair of the committee, at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct the meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and, and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as requesting discussion on any uh, uh, agenda item. Ms. Cox, can you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Yes. Um, Mr. Offerman? Present. Ms. I'm sorry, Stolowski, Stolowski. Ms. Kazi? Present. Ms. Hassan? Present. Mr. McMillan? Present. Ms. Cox, can you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Dr. McComas? Present. Dr. Holmes? Present. Dr. Wisted. Present. Ms. Shea. Present. Dr. Ellendorf. Present. Ms. Ferguson. Present. Ms. Myers. Present. And we also have Dr. Woolridge. Present. And Mr. Barbarisi. Present. Thank you. Please call and note the names of all staff members participating in the meeting. Request if there are any other members participating on the call that you have not named. I don't see anyone else. Great, thank you. Uh, I will facilitate discussion by calling off the names of committee members to speak in turn. Committee members will also acknowledge that they have a question by calling on the chair and then stating their name. Staff members will be answering any questions posed by the committee by saying their name first, then speaking. Staff members that want to add to discussion may call on the chair and then speak their name. If the chair calls for, for motions, committee member will move and say their name and a second committee member will second and say their name. The chair will then state, may I have a roll call vote? Okay. okay, assistance will speak, excuse me, assistance will speak, each committee members present or participating for, for, for their vote and record the appropriate, uh, excuse me, and record appropriately for the ETA. Okay, are we ready to get started? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, at this point, let, let Dr. McComas start us off. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um, our first item today is really a showcase. We're very excited. Um, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Wisted, Dr. Woolridge, and Mr. Barbarisi uh, to present on AVID. Uh, many of you know this is our 20th anniversary of having AVID in Baltimore County Schools. And so that's where we're really here to highlight this particular program for our students today. And this is surely an informational item. Um, thank you. Go ahead. Turn it over to the team. Thank you, Dr. McComas. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. As Dr. McComas said, it's a privilege to speak to you about AVID today because we are celebrating our 20th anniversary of AVID and BCPS. Next slide, please. BCPS's college and career readiness programs align with our strategic plan, the COMPASS, our pathway to excellence in learning, accountability, and results section. Our goal is simple preparing each child to graduate ready to enter their chosen career, career training, military training, or credit-bearing college-level coursework. Our work is to provide the necessary supports that deliver on this promise. Next slide, please. One way we deliver on this promise is by partnering with the AVID Center. 
AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. It's a college readiness system in K through 12 schools with a mission to close the opportunity gap by preparing all students for college readiness and success in a global society. This directly aligns with BCPS's vision, raising the bar, closing gaps, and preparing for our future. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, AVID started in one classroom in one high school in California in 1980. Mary Catherine Swanson was the teacher of that very first class. She was determined to help her students who were from racial and ethnic backgrounds traditionally underrepresented in higher education and to help them believe and know and experience applications to four-year colleges acceptances to four-year colleges, scholarships to attend four-year colleges, and to matriculate all the way through their four years and earn their bachelor's degree. And she did that. Her success for the first class was outstanding. All of the students earned full scholarships to college and continued on and earned their college degrees. Her district took notice, obviously, <laughs> because that's great success. And thus, AVID was born um, and began to grow not only in her district, but in the state of California and then into Texas. And it's now in 48 of our states, and it's in many, many uh, countries around the world. We, as BCPS, joined the AVID family in 2002 with six middle schools. Each of those schools received a 1.0 FTE to support the new programs. The 1.0 FTE became the AVID elective teacher and the AVID site coordinator. Each year for the next eight years, BCPS continued to expand the number of sites implementing the AVID College Readiness System until in 2010, there were 26 middle and high schools implementing the AVID College Readiness System. Unfortunately, at that time, there was a moratorium placed on the FTEs and the growth ceased. We continued to support the 26 schools, but we did not continue to add on. And that was not until 2014. In 2014, AVID Center began moving its own AVID program from an elective-centric secondary program to a school-wide college readiness system. Schools like ours began to infuse writing to learn, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and writing to learn strategies, what we call WICR. These strategies that are critical to AVID student success, we began to infuse them into all of our content areas. Our 26 AVID schools um, with AVID programs quickly became proud not to call themselves a school with AVID, but to call themselves AVID schools with an AVID college readiness system school-wide. This started getting the attention of other schools in BCPS, and we began onboarding additional middle and high schools, um, but unfortunately we were doing that without the 1.0 FTE. At that same time in 2014, AVID Center introduced AVID Elementary, a school-wide approach to preparing our youngest scholars for the challenges of middle and high school and preparing them to pursue the post-secondary education and training that their little hearts desired to be whatever they want to be when they grow up. Our secondary schools were delighted that the AVID Elementary schools uh, in their feeder patterns might have the opportunity to be introduced to AVID at such a young age. And elementary principals will de were delighted to have the opportunity to implement this research-based college readiness system that has proven effective in their own schools. So in 2017, we piloted out of Al AVID Elementary at Holliburd STEM in their third, fourth, and fifth grades. And their success led to our onboarding 10 new additional AVID Elementary sites in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have in our 20th year of AVID in BCPS, 55 AVID college readiness systems in elementary, middle, and high schools in BCPS. Mr. Barbarisi will now tell you a little bit more about AVID and BCPS. Thank you, Dr. Wildridge. BCPS has worked in partnership with AVID for 20 years, since 2002 when we started with just six schools and less than 120 AVID students in the AVID elective class. Today, AVID is implemented as a school 
school-wide college readiness system in 55 BCPS schools. 11 of those are elementary, 22 are middle, and all 22 comprehensive high schools, including schools that are celebrated as national models of AVID implementation, which we'll show in a few slides. In school year 22-23, AVID and BCPS is serving over 7,000 students through the AVID elective class in grades 6 through 12 and in the classrooms of AVID trained elementary school teachers. This past summer, 400 BCPS AVID educators attended the two-day AVID Path Plus professional workshop in Baltimore, earning them AVID trained certification and supporting school-wide and system-wide collective educator agency and a shared instructional language and values. They're inspired and they're ready to go. They're ready to serve that mission of closing opportunity gaps on their campus. In the end though, it's all about our students and helping them to attain their goals for college and career. The BCPS class of 2022 was our largest graduating class ever with 592 graduating AVID scholars who earned a combined total of more than $54 million in scholarship and grant offers. And we look forward to continuing to grow and positively impact more students and school communities. Next slide, please. AVID is a school-wide college and career readiness system in all of BCPS's non-magnet high schools, all but Western, Eastern, and Carver, and all but four BCPS middle schools, Arbutus Middle School, Franklin Middle School, Hereford Middle School, and Stemmers Run Middle Schools. Next slide, please. The power of AVID on the secondary level is the ability to impact students in the AVID elective class and all students throughout the campus. The AVID elective is available to students in grades six through 12 who possess the desire to go to college and the willingness to work hard, but who may face barriers in becoming college ready. These are often the students who will be the first in their families to attend college and are from groups traditionally underrepresented in higher education. For one period a day, students in the AVID elective class receive additional academic, social, and emotional support that will help them succeed in their school's most rigorous courses. AVID secondary can have an effect on the entire school by providing classroom activities, teaching practices, and academic behaviors that can be incorporated into any classroom to improve engagement and success for all students. AVID secondary equips teachers and schools with what they need to help all students succeed on their path to college and career readiness. Next slide, please. These are our AVID elementary schools. All of these schools, except for Hollabird STEM, were onboarded in 2019 and went through a rigorous application and onboarding process. Our elementary schools embrace AVID as the instructional and cultural foundation in their schools. And in just a few short years, despite the challenges of the pandemic, they have made amazing strides in the classrooms of AVID trained teachers and grade levels that have a majority of their teachers AVID trained supporting school-wide shared language around instruction and a shared vision for supporting the mission of the school and our school system. Next slide, please. Avid Elementary is not an elective class. Instead, it teaches and reinforces academic behaviors and higher level thinking to students throughout the school at a young age. Elementary students develop the academic habits they will need to be successful in middle school, high school, college, and beyond and in age-appropriate, highly engaging, and challenging ways. Children learn about organization, study skills, communication, and self-advocacy. Avid elementary students take structured notes and ask and answer high-level questions that go beyond your routine levels of questioning. The strong college-going culture in Avid elementary campuses encourage students to think about their college and career plans. Schools cover their walls with college pennants and banners, and educators speak about their college and career experiences. College and careers are no longer a foreign concept to our elementary students, and teachers provide the academic foundation skills that they need to be on a path for college and career success. AVID Elementary aims to close the opportunity gap before it exists. Next slide, please. I'll turn it back over to Dr. Wildritz to talk about AVID's data and how it impacts our students so amazingly. Thank you, Mr. Barbarisi. Research shows that AVID scholars have higher attendance rates, lower suspension rates, higher GPAs. They're more likely to complete requirements for four-year institutions. They're more likely to apply to two and four-year institutions. 
They, they report a greater sense of belonging in school. They're more likely to matriculate to their second year of college, and they're more likely to graduate with a four-year degree than their non-AVID peers. And this is national data for the United States. Mr. Barbarisi, can you talk to us about the data specific to BCPS scholars? Next slide. No, please. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, as you can see, this is just a snapshot of some of the key impact metrics that we collect as a part of the AVID coaching and certification process in all of our AVID schools. One of the benefits of AVID membership is they have a robust data system that produces the res these reports and provides support around their analysis. As you can see, AVID students in BCPS attend school regularly. A majority will complete Algebra 1 in middle school and then enroll in honors courses for high school. In high school, our AVID scholars develop their student agency and are provided pathways to and support in the most rigorous courses in the school, such as AP, IB, and dual enrollment courses, as well as the exams associated with these courses. Most AVID scholars will choose to attend a four-year university, and a majority of our AVID graduating seniors will be the first in their family to complete college. We also know that college persistence rates are higher among AVID scholars than their non-AVID peers. All of this data, except for our senior data, was taken from last school year. We're still rebuilding some of that senior data, and we will have a robust report on last year's graduating class in just a few months. Next slide, please. AVID and BCPS is a model for best practices, closing opportunity gaps, and serves as a platform for attaining school-wide goals. We stand out, not only in this region, but in the country, as AVID exists in 48 states and on the campuses of all U.S. Department of Defense schools around the world. AVID and BCPS has distinguished itself as a model for the implementation of AVID in many ways. BCPS is home to two national AVID demonstration high schools. Newtown High School, the first ever AVID na national demonstration high school in the state of Maryland, and Pikesville High School, both of which are honored also as AVID school-wide sites of distinction. Dundalk Middle School is also an AVID school-wide site of distinction and is currently engaged in an intensive coaching process as an emerging national demonstration school. In 2022, Patapsco High School and Center for the Arts, Newtown Elementary School, Pikesville High, and Dundalk Middle were selected by AVID Center to prepare virtual solution snapshot showcases attended by AVID Center staff and stakeholders all over the Mid-Atlantic and Southern States regions. Newtown Elementary was featured as a national AVID showcase hosted by AVID Center for partners throughout the world to see what AVID Elementary can do and is implemented with fidelity. These schools stand out as exemplars, but all AVID schools in our system go through a certification process throughout each year to attain varying levels of certification in order to help them set goals for the advancement of all students on their campus year after year. And we are extremely proud of all of our schools, no matter where they are on their AVID journey, and strive to empower the leadership, faculty, and students in those schools to increase their agency, advocacy, and access for all students. Next slide, please. The a a AVID College Readiness System is integral to our system improvement teams. There are currently five, possibly more, but five system improvement teams that are using our AVID College Readiness System to support their work. The College and Career Ready uh, Career Technical Education and AVID Task Force is assuring equitable access to and improving program completion rates in CTE and AVID programs. The College and Career, Career Ready Graduation System Improvement Team is looking at how supports such as effective learning habits for college and career readiness, a course designed based on the methodologies of AVID and other acad AVID academic supports can help support students transition from fifth to sixth and from eighth to ninth grades. The College and Career Ready Assessments uh, system Improvement Plan is looking at how AVID encourages students' participation and increased achievement on our standardized tests. And the Algebra 1 by 8th grade team is looking at how AVID certification metric measures the percentage of AVID students and all students school-wide who complete Algebra 1 during middle school as a metric to predict college and career readiness in the future. Next slide, please. 
Avid membership is not free, <laughs> but it is worth absolutely every penny. It is student centered, culturally relevant curricula. It provides highly engaging and, in my opinion, the most effective professional learning on this earth. It is equity based leadership development for all staff. It provides robust data collection and analysis. And with our membership, we get direct support from Avid Center staff. It does cost a little over 3000 for each secondary site and a little uh, just close a little under 3000 for each elementary site. Next slide, please. What Avid membership cannot give us is staffing. Our current allocation of staffing is 28 at full time employees for 44 secondary sites. 4.8 of those um, allocations are or FTEs are allocated to five of our 23 middle schools and 23.2 FTEs are allocated to our 22 high schools. We need 21 FTEs to ensure all middle and high school have a 1.0 FTE to ensure that we are implementing AVID um, equally and effectively and with fidelity in all of our sites. Next slide, please. But we're not going to let that slow our growth. <laughs> AVID is good for children. AVID is exceptional for adults. And um, we believe in the power of AVID. And so we are going to celebrate our 20th anniversary of AVID and BCPS by onboarding nine new sites for school year 23-24. We will be onboarding the remaining four middle schools that Mr. Barbarisi referenced earlier. So we will be able to proudly say that every middle school in BCPS has AVID next school year. And then and surprise, surprise, we get to onboard five new elementary schools and it's going to be so hard to make the choice because there are many more elementary schools that are advocating to become a part of our AVID family. So next year, ladies and um, folks, we will have 64 AVID sites and we will continue to implement with fidelity and be a model for the nation and the world. Next slide, please. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to think about with our tagline this year, which is imagine what's possible. Imagine, imagine that anything is possible with AVID because AVID is good for students and it's great for adults and it supports the exceptional curriculum that our district provides to every student in pre-K through 12. It, it enhances it, it supports it, and it helps students become the educated scholars that we need for our futures because they are going to be our future leaders and caretakers. So thank you so much. We welcome your questions. Thank you for that really outstanding presentation. Uh, I have a few comments and questions, but I'll reserve mine until the end. Are there any other uh, board members or committee members who would like to speak at this time? Comment or question? Hearing none, I will go to my questions or concerns. Uh, first of all, I uh, really, really in comment form just, just want to emphasize your one, one of your last points about the need for additional FTEs. Yes, sir. Because uh, I, I don't know how middle school and high schools that don't have a dedicated FTE can, can actually provide that service. I'm hoping that maybe some of our principals are able to do something with their staffing to to uh, to support this very very valuable program. Uh, secondly, uh, I and I perhaps I'm wrong about this, but on one of the previous slides, I think I saw a slight decrease in the number of students over the last four years. Is that correct? So we have actually been increasing the number of students we're supporting, but we did um, offboard three schools. Um, we offboarded three of our alternative schools because they could not implement the AVID College Readiness System with the fidelity that we expect, but we are they're still a part of the AVID family. We still provide support. They still can have access to um, the curriculum and they can attend all of our trainings. They just, um, because they don't keep their students full full year um, and don't graduate their students, uh, they don't actually meet the profile for an AVID site. Thank you so much. I see Ms. Causey has a question. Ms. Causey, go ahead. 
Good afternoon and thank you for that presentation. Um, I just wanted to add a, a, a comment and then a question that um, I have visited AVID classrooms and talked with AVID teachers and AVID students and really see the value in this program. And um, when we have such a widely diverse uh, community, Baltimore County wide, uh, with, as was pointed out, many, many um, students who are first generation uh, going to college. This is such a magnificent program. So I, I really appreciate all of the dedication that has uh, gone on both from uh, central office, uh, multiple superintendents and the individual teachers um, involved in this program. And also a shout out to those students that take advantage of this program. And this is so heartfelt that they achieve dreams they didn't know they could have. So I, I just I just want to say that. And um, I did have a question relative to um, uh, Mr. Offerman about the FTEs and just wanted you to go over again. What is the current staffing model um, for these schools and how has that changed over time? Because you, you mentioned a lot of dates and I just wanted to have a clearer understanding. Sure, so um, in the, the first eight years of our membership with AVID, each time a school was onboarded, they were given 1.0 FTE. And then um, there was a moratorium on FTEs. And so I, prior to my joining the office, um, there was some reallocation. And so some of the middle schools have a 0.6 or a 0.8. Um, at our, we had one school that had high school that had a 2.0, um, but any school that was onboarded af uh, after 2014 was onboarded with no FTE whatsoever. We have requested um, several years in a row to adjust that model so that we could spread the wealth a little bit so that every site um, would be able to have a portion of an FTE um, and as you can imagine that was coming around the time that COVID hit and trying to adjust staffing during COVID was not high priority um, so we will continue to ask to see if we can adjust the allocations that we do have to make uh, provide more equitable support um, but we're also going to continue to ask for FTEs so that each school can have a full one. Yeah okay, and if great. I may oh sorry Ms. Cosby. I no, I just wanted to say thank you very much for that clarification. And um, again, kudos to uh, the schools that are implementing it without that additional FTE. But um, as we know, our principals and, and, and the school instructional teams are are very creative and, and dedicated to utilizing their resources. Absolutely. And that's all I was just going to piggyback and um, say, you know, for those schools that we have not, um, you know, their circumstances haven't um, afforded us the opportunity to give them a dedicated extra FTE. They are, uh, as you said, Ms. Causey, so poignantly, our principals are creative and they prioritize within the staffing allocation they have how to support these programs. But um, we will continue to advocate uh, over time. We know that there's always many um, many needs that we're trying to bring forward, um, and especially when it comes to staffing. So, okay. Uh, I you. think uh, Ms. Hassan has some questions too, comments and questions, I see. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, first of all, a huge shout out to you guys. Um, I had the privilege, oh, um, I had the privilege of seeing Avid at work last year when um, I was able to tutor um, for a full year and act as an Avid tutor. So I got to see how that works in the classroom. Um, my sister is also a huge Avid person. She's very upset that Carver High School does not have Avid, but um, so she's like a big, we're a big Avid family over here. So a huge shout out to you guys. I see all the work you do. It's amazing. So thank you. Um, and in regards to questions, how can we support schools further in order to make sure that they are able to fit the profile for AVID schools and we can extend those resources to as many schools as possible? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. McComas. 
no, I, if you don't mind, Heather, I'll try to go ahead and take us a, a first uh, Please. effort towards this. So great question. And, mm -hmm. you know, in your role as board members, of course, you are incredibly influential in the budget process. Um, and along with the budget, part of budget is staffing. And so we've spent some time today talking about the importance of supporting this program um, in terms of staffing. So that's one way as we move and towards the budget process, building next year's July 1st budget. Um, and then, of course, we shared with you the cost per school site. Um, and we are excited to continue to expand at our elementary schools. Um, as we shared, not every one of our elementary schools is yet an AVID site. Um, one of the beauties at the elementary school is that actually there's no staffing need at the elementary school. Um, some of that does fall back then on our central team who's here with you. Um, so maybe perhaps it's Dr. Woolridge and, and Mr. Barbarisi, if you could share kind of how that looks at the elementary level, um, where as opposed to the secondary level where that staff person teaches elective courses. Of course, we all know elementary uh, schedules are different. So maybe if you could elaborate, that might help help um, everyone understand sort of the, the differences between them, but that fundamentally is to support it, is that as we move forward and you see it coming in budget request uh, that it's supported at the board level. Thank you. I'm going to invite Mr. Barbarisi to speak on that. Thanks. Um, so firstly, all of our, so we have a school-based teacher in each one of our schools that gets an EDA of about $3,500, which is an extra duty activity. Um, and then the staffing that we look at for that secondary level is because we offer an elective class. The difference at the elementary level is that AVID is a school-wide system that layers highly engaging research-based practices on top of the existing curriculum to lift kids up past you know, uh, uh, the levels of their current achievement. So when we look at certification for an AVID elementary school, we look at those grade levels that have a majority of their teachers trained in that grade level and the cognitive skills, the executive functioning skills, note taking skills that they're building, and we measure those throughout the year. That is layered into their existing curriculum, so they're not getting pulled out or taking an elective class that's called AVID. Um, so we lean into that support as more of that primarily school-wide system supporting um, all teachers with a focus on our AVID trained teachers. Whereas in the elective classes, it is we take that AVID elective class as the building block to spread that out to a school-wide system. And so that's why, why the staffing um, you know, differences exist at those two levels. Thank you. And I would just add the way another way you can support us. Dr. McComas um, gave great examples already, but another way is when you're visiting schools, please yeah. seek out our AVID scholars. Please seek out our AVID trained adults, um, our administrators that um, have the vision for having AVID instrumental to their instruction, their curriculum and instruction program, and, and just thank them because they are hard, hard working um, and, and hands down some of the most talented educators you will ever meet um, and some hands down some of the most inspiring students you will ever meet. So just your presence and you seeking them out is a huge boost. Thank you. That Those responses were perfect. Thank you guys so much. Um, and I totally agree with that last statement. Our AVID scholars and teachers are absolutely amazing. Um, and I guess another question, I guess on the same train of thought, um, so how can we, or how are we building consistency and transparency between our schools regarding AVID implementation? I know, you know, we can say that all of these schools have AVID and it's awesome and I'm so excited, um, but then how are we, how can we ensure that every school is able to meet a certain standard when it comes to the implementation of that, how students absorb that information and I know we talk a lot about stopping and our teachers are awesome yes. but in, is there anything else that we can do is there anything else that you are doing to make sure that we have that consistency and transparency yeah that's another fabulous question the uh, accountability and measurement tool that we use in partnership with AVID Center is called the AVID Coaching and Certification Instrument and it is a rating scale but what we like to consider it instead of um, making it 
you know, the connotation of rating skill sometimes can be negative. We see it as a as a guide. The document is a guide for implementation and we have been lucky in the 20 years that we have been implementing AVID. I want to say 98% of our sites have been highly certified every single year, uh, and that's due to the dedication of the AVID district leadership team, um, the competence and excellence of our AVID site coordinators. We meet with them monthly. Uh, they are uh, trained by AVID center staff annually. They, we meet with them monthly to work them through the, the guide, the CCI, the coaching and certification instrument, um, and we really let them take the lead on telling us what level of implementation they want. And we are proud of them. As long as they are certified, you know, we are we are happy with where they want to be. Um, that's why you see that we have two national demonstration schools, potentially three or four coming up uh, next year uh, and out of out of the 55 sites, because that is a level of implementation that it, only three percent of sites in the in the world meet, right? So not every BCPS school is going to be a national demonstration school and we're OK with that. Um, so we use that CCI to help schools identify what level of implementation they want. Then we work directly with the AVID site coordinators monthly. We um, co-teach and co-plan uh, with our AVID elective teachers and our AVID trained elementary uh, teachers. We provide ongoing professional development. I just did a two hour um, workshop last night for, on focused note taking and had 55 participants. Um, and so we just continuously offer professional learning, um, direct support to administrators and teachers and go in and get involved with the students and 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 teach them and learn with them and grow with them. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, that is all amazing and sounds absolutely amazing. So thank you for all of the work you put in. And I swear I only have one last question. Um, so in regards to looking at how we can expand um, AVID programs in a way, just because I know some schools aren't able to have them um, or aren't yet able to have them, um, is it possible that we can maybe look into extending it into the VLP program, having it as almost an external course, something, you know, outside of the schoolhouse, like the actual physical schoolhouse um, that we can, I guess, look into and see if we can expand those opportunities for other students who may not already have access to AVID. So that's another great question. Um, I really want you to kiss your brain. You're asking great questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so for a while there has been a, a, a a call for additional AVID inspired courses to support students on the secondary level that uh, don't meet the criteria for the AVID elective course or can't work it into their schedules. And so we have developed a course called Effective Learning Habits for College and Career Readiness. It is a separate curriculum is offered for grades six, seven, eight, and nine. And um, so our schools that don't have AVID on the secondary level may implement uh, effective learning habits for college and career readiness. Um, we have been working with AVID Center. I think I mentioned earlier that we uh, offboarded three sites at one point um, because they were the alternative schools that couldn't quite meet the uh, requirements of an AVID program from AVID Center. And unfortunately, the VLP does fall under that category right now. Um, but we have been working with AVID Center um, about developing a way for our alternative schools to come back on board and for us to bring the VLP in. Uh, that is going to be directed by AVID Center, um, but they know we're advocating for it hard. Um, so the VLP does implement the Effective Learning Habits course. And if I'm, did I miss any answers to any questions? I think I covered that. I can see Dr. Elmendorf is typing, so I'd like to invite if you want to just comment if that would be easier or Dr. quicker for you. Yeah, Dr. Walters read my mind. Uh -huh. I was going to say that VLP does do effective learning habits and she mentioned okay. it right as I was finishing my sentence. Great job, okay, Dr. Great. Walters. <laughs> Thank you. OK, awesome. Um, no, I very much remember taking effective learning habits in my middle school, so I was very fortunate to have that. 
major hearts to that and major hearts to you all. Um, <laughs> that is all of my questions. So I'm going to give the stage to anyone else. Um, so thank you guys so much for answering my questions. You guys are awesome. Of course. Uh, are there any more any more uh, comments or concerns from any committee members? OK, Mr. Efferman, if it's OK, if I jump in. Yes, please go ahead. OK, okay thank so you. Is typing. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for letting us come and celebrate our 20 years and share with you, um, you know, where we are. Ms. Causey, I think you have another question. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Just in, re in reviewing back over the slides on page 14, it mentions um, the presentation mentions a cost of $3,344 per high or middle school yeah. and a cost of $2,829 per elementary school. Is that um, per student that is enrolled in the classes or is that the total cost for this, the whole school? The school. Yeah, it's a the site. Total. It's basically like a site. I don't know if you want to say license, but Mm -hmm. So in terms of what's available to our students, that's a very low cost per pupil. Mm -hmm. Is that is that a fair statement? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Just an, another uh, positive that I wanted to clarify and then point out. So thank you for that very much. Great. Thank you, Ms. Causey. And thank you, everyone. I think it's time to uh, to move on to the next uh, to the next topic. Talk Dr. McComb if you're ready. Yes, yes, sir. So um, we're, uh, our next item here, there's two um, contracts that uh, you all will see in the October Contracts Committee. And then, of course, the the October uh, board meeting where contracts will be addressed. Uh, these are contracts that are already in place and they're they're coming forward for modifications. So at that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Wistad and Ms. Shea and they will share with you. Um, and again, the, these are things that um, we have in place and I just want, you know, I always try to make sure that you know what's coming up and what these materials or resources are, why we are asking for them, how we use them. So. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Wisted. Thank you. Um, so you may remember that Ms. Stansbury and I were here back in May talking about um, the contract for the child care centers that some of our community schools wanted to engage in. We, You've seen this infographic quite a few times because many of the contracts that have come up over the past few months have been a result of community schools wanting to use their funds, the concentration of poverty funds, to um, leverage different programs for their schools. So in this case, um, the reasons why they were interested in participating in a, a vendor a bid process for child care providers is because you know the, the root cause analysis that they did at some of the schools were that the elementary students were unsupervised before and after the school day. The secondary students were unable to monitor their elementary siblings and also arrive to school on time or um, you know for that morning time. Uh, also, the caregiver work schedule didn't align with the school bell schedules. And lastly, that students were arriving late or leaving school early um, because their before and after school options were limited. Uh, the contract that already was approved is getting modified to the point only because two additional vendors wanted to join starting for this school year. So um, you may remember we talked about the average cost that it, again will be paid out of the concentration of poverty grant is listed here, $250 a month and potentially $2,500 per school year. Um, and the uh, concentration of poverty schools had this average chronic absentee uh, for about 25 students that potentially they might want to serve. So potentially it could cost 62,500 per year um, for each school. And again, they will, uh, because they've done it through their needs assessment for their community school um, needs assessment, they will use their concentration of poverty funds for that. And then Ms. Shea has a contract as well. Oh, wait. Before oh, we go do forward, want to do questions for mine first. Yes, if we could, uh, just to keep everybody focused. So this is a modifications adding to uh, before and after school child care providers for our community schools. And so let's just pause here, see if there's any questions, and if we could uh, then get approval. Okay. 
if there's any questions on that one. I don't see any in the chat, in the chat. so uh, okay. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Could we do a vote then, just to have it on the approval? Um, we need a motion. Yes, I'm sorry. We need a motion. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, would anyone like to move that we uh, approve this modification of uh, of uh, of the uh, of the contract this time? So moved, Hassan. Anyone second, please? Second, Ms. Causey. Thank you so much. The uh, motion has been moved and seconded. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. McMillan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, go ahead, Ms. Shea, you can walk us through our modification for our open court contract. Thank you, Dr. McComas. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I am bringing forward as a, an update and courtesy as Dr. McComas described. In October, we will be coming forward with a modification for the contract ARA 21219, which is our open court contract. So as most of you know, open court is the core instructional resource that we use in all of our classrooms, K through three. Um, in order to provide an evidence-based resource for the systematic and explicit instruction in foundational skills aligned to the elements of the science of reading and of course the college and career ready standards for reading foundations as well as our compass focus area one. The increase in spending authority will provide for the continued purchase of teacher resources, print student consumables, and digital access to core and supplemental resources for both students and teachers. The reason that we are um, need to ask for an increase is because this contract was approved in July of 2019. And as you know, the world shifted quite dramatically after that. During the pandemic, we found ourselves purchasing an, a significant increase in the number of teacher kits because in response to the pandemic and our ongoing efforts to provide small group instruction, schools were purchasing many more teacher kits so that they could provide them for small group instruction either with um, reading support staff, paraeducators, reading specialists, and special educators. And so we found ourselves purchasing a significant number of additional teacher kits to allow schools to provide that support for students in small group instruction. We also expanded the use of open court to include the purchase of teacher kits for all special educators, including those serving students in our integrated model and self-contained classrooms which was not a part of the original um, contract spending authority. The ongoing increase um, will allow us to continue to purchase the consumables. We centrally purchase for every school every year, the replenishment of those consumables so that every student has their own consumable book, um, which is the um, decodable readers as well as the um, student book that they work in. And so in, uh, in order to continue to provide that for the duration of the current contract, we will be coming forward to request the spending authority increase. So Thank you. I'll take any questions. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or questions from uh, from the committee members? Not seeing any, I would ask for a motion that we approve this modification. This is so Ms. Causey. Moved, Rod McMillian. This is Ms. Causey. I'll second. Thank you Thank so you. much. Ms. Uh, Ms. Causey, I, I you, did, you, you also have a comment? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ms. Causey. Yes, I did have a question. So in the um, document that was um, provided that's also available publicly on board docs for ARA-2112-19, um, that stated it was a new contract, and at that time um, it was not specified. Was that a sole source contract or competitively bid or an RFP? It, it was um, a competitive bid initially. We did an RFI, and then we did at the time have seven different vendors respond. And then, um, as you'll recall, for curricular materials, we select outlined in policy and rule 6002, and that's, at that time it was awarded to Open Court. OK, thank you. Sure. And then ha has there been any. Um, 
improvement in pricing. Sometimes uh, pricing goes down as um, curriculum becomes more established and it's more widely available. So has there been any um, change in the price per pupil or for the teacher kits? No, I believe the price was negotiated at the time of the contract and would remain consistent for the duration of the contract. I can certainly confirm with purchasing before the contracts meeting, but that's my understanding. OK, and then. Um, I had another question, but it it has escaped me. Yes, Paul, so you can certainly okay, send you. that in. And, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, no problem. And we have answered later. Uh, OK. I just want to comment that I would be stunned if anything is cheaper now than it was when we, when we uh, started this process that way. Uh, are there any other comments from from any of the board members? If not, the motion has been made and seconded. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Rothman? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Mr. McMillan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, everyone. OK, uh, is there any other is there any other business at, at this time? No, sir, not from our not from staff. Right, that's fine. I would encourage members of this committee because I know we have a returning member and a new member on the day as well as Mr. Lasky to if they have uh, specific interest areas or concerns that they forward them to me and I will uh, work with uh, Dr. McComish in order to get them on the agenda for one of the future meetings. Yep. Uh, at this time, if there's no further, uh, if there's no further business, the announcement for today will be that the next curriculum committee meeting will be held on, I believe it's it says September 22nd, but I believe it's October 22nd. Is that, is that correct? October 20th, is that correct? I, let me, Look at the calendar real quick. I'm sorry. Yes, it's October 20th. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> thank okay, you, Ms. Scott. <laughs> OK, thank you. If there's no further business at this time, uh, the meeting is adjourned. And thank you all for joining us. And, uh, and thank you for the uh, excellent presentations. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Have a great rest of the day.